I tried blender sculpting for the first time. I'm not afraid to admit it. Hey, we all have a first time. So what brought me to do something like that? Was I going through a depression? No, you all did. We were like, hey, Laura, why don't you try blender sculpting? You'll see, it's gonna be a lot of fun. <sighs> so I'm here to report that I've created my first successful head within Blender. And you know what? It wasn't too bad. When I started Blender, I really had no idea where to go to even begin to sculpt. But I found on the top toolbar that there is this little sculpting tab that is right there. So upon clicking on that, Blender switched the interface over to what you are looking at with all the brushes on the left and on the right here, all of the brush settings that are needed to modify the brushes that Blender has for sculpting. And so without knowing anything about Blender and never having used it to sculpt before, I was actually able to intuitively find my way around how to begin sculpting on something. And I have to give mad props to Blender for that. I don't actually think that someone who's interested in blindly picking up ZBrush would be able to even get this far without resorting to having to look at tutorials. I spent a lot of time in the beginning to try and find brushes in Blender that were quite similar to the brushes that I'm used to using in ZBrush. And I'm glad to say that I've found pretty much everything that I needed there. There's the clay strips brush here that is actually very close to the clay buildup brush that I'm used to using within ZBrush most of the time when I'm sculpting on things. There's the draw brush that is very close to the standard brush of ZBrush. There's the draw sharp brush, the second brush from the top on the left here that is actually very close to the damp standard brush. And those who've seen me sculpt in ZBrush know that I like to use a combination of clay buildup to build up volume, and then a clay tubes brush after that to polish and refine the volumes over the surface. And although the clay strips brush of Blender is quite close to the clay buildup brush of ZBrush, it was a bit trickier to find a brush that is exactly like the clay tubes brush that I personally use within ZBrush to polish a surface. But by fiddling around, I eventually came across the fill brush and the scrape brush within Blender. So I have to give mad props to Blender for the fact that it has a series of basic brushes that are very close to the ZBrush brushes that I'm used to using. And so starting to sculpt in Blender actually felt right at home. Shortcut assignations was actually very tricky. I somehow find my way within the preferences of Blender and had turned on this option that makes it so that every time I press spacebar, I have Blender's full list of sculpting brushes that appear in a way that is very similar to pressing B within ZBrush and having the menu of brushes appear at that moment. But I found out the hard way that when all those brushes were displayed by pressing spacebar, that there's a little shortcut to the right of the name of the brushes within Blender. And those shortcuts aren't actually always assigned to those brushes. And it's only by fiddling around in the shortcut customization menu of the preferences of Blender that I was able to rectify that. So that was a little quirk, but that was more or less the last thing that I really needed to get out of the way to be able to start sculpting. So on the right of the interface near the bottom, there is this little remesh tab that is right there. And you can see that my voxel size, I've set it here to 0.007 meters. I have no idea what that means in terms of scene scale, but it gave me polygons that were small enough that I was able to go to town and sculpt this head successfully. A few times through the creation of this sculpt, I had to remesh the head once again after I had done some major proportional changes. And so I found that doing remeshes once in a while while working on the head when I would start to feel like the surface was stretching way too much, was very similar to simply using Dynamesh within ZBrush. I've also stumbled upon this Dyn Topo option on the right of the interface, right above where it says Remesh. And this Dyn Topo option, once it's turned on, will dynamically recalculate the surface under your brush strokes, which works pretty much exactly the way that Sculptress works within ZBrush. <laughs> 
So all the basic options that you really need to simply pick up Blender and start sculpting, as someone who's used to doing sculpting within ZBrush, pretty much everything is there. All of the basics are there. I haven't played around yet with things like subdivision levels. I haven't really tried to push the number of polygons over an object as far as I possibly could either. You can see on the top right of the interface here that I have about 2 million polygons or so over this head. And I really didn't get any sort of performance issues with that. I was actually quite afraid after hearing other people talk about sculpting performance within Blender that I would not even be able to sculpt at this high of a resolution. But truth be told, it actually went really, really well. I really didn't get any kind of noticeable performance slowdowns when sculpting at 2 million polygons here over this head. And I'm looking forward to see how performance goes once I start playing around with subdivisions. And when I start subdividing a head at a much higher resolution than this, it's gonna be very interesting to see how performance holds up then. So my goal for this exercise really was just to pick up Blender and see if I can find my way around sculpting in there without knowing anything about the interface. And I'm glad to say that that actually worked out quite well. It really only took me 60 minutes to really get the interface out of the way, so to speak. But once that actually happened, as you can see, I was able to just start sculpting here in a way that felt very intuitive for me as someone who's used to sculpting within ZBrush. And before long, I could practically forget that I was in a different software than ZBrush. I do have to say that it's a huge relief to finally be sculpting within a software that has both a real 3D camera and real lights in there. It's actually very, very satisfying to be able to do that. Because we know that ZBrush doesn't have real perspective. It has this 2.5D camera, this 2.5D canvas, which is both its strength and its weakness, of course. The fact that it's not a real 3D software is probably a big reason why ZBrush is so good at dealing with objects that are extremely dense in terms of polygon count. But the drawback of that, of course, is that you don't get to work with a real 3D camera and real perspective. And having a real perspective is actually so important because all we're doing when we're sculpting is reading volumes, reading shapes, reading proportions between things. And if the perspective is just a little bit off, then that's gonna throw off our whole sculpture. Now, I can already anticipate the questions of people asking me, okay, Laura, so are you switching over to Blender? Is that your goal? Is that what you're actually doing here? And no, that's not actually my goal. My goal isn't necessarily to switch over to Blender, but I've been meaning to give it a try for a while. And there's so many people who have great things to say about Blender that I figured it's time for me to give it a spin and to really make up my own judgment of the software. And I know that there's a lot of you too who would like to see a lot of content on this channel that is Blender based. So I'm looking forward to sharing my experiments, my discoveries, and if there's a way for me to put together my extensive experience of character modeling and character sculpting with knowledge of Blender, I think that will probably make for a winning combination. But I also wouldn't be doing this if I didn't simply enjoy the process. I'm not one to be attached to any particular software. I think all softwares are tools. And I think that all, all softwares are owned by companies ultimately, so none of those are worth my emotional investment. So I need to treat them all with detachment and objective evaluation. And if one software like Blender does something better than what ZBrush does, I'm not gonna be afraid to admit it. So the real 3D camera is a huge plus in Blender's favor versus ZBrush. But beyond that, I haven't seen anything in Blender so far that makes me feel that someone who is already used to using ZBrush should absolutely switch over. But then again, Blender isn't really in competition with ZBrush. You could actually say instead that it is ZBrush who is in competition with Blender because it is ZBrush which costs a few hundred dollars and Blender is free. So ultimately it is up to ZBrush to justify its price. When it comes to sketching and sculpting, it feels to me like Blender is close enough to ZBrush that I have yet to see anything in ZBrush that makes me feel that someone should absolutely spend the money for ZBrush as opposed to try to pick up Blender if they are just starting off. Now, of course, ZBrush is absolutely a professional tool and I'm sure that there's a whole lot of reasons that I will eventually stumble upon that makes me say that someone who is looking to do character sculpting professionally should absolutely pick up ZBrush. 
But when it comes to someone who is starting off, someone who is simply a hobbyist, someone who wants to see what character art is all about without having to invest hundreds of dollars, with my limited experience with Blender so far, I can definitely say that this is a great starting point and that someone should get as much out of this software as they can before they really consider splurging on something like ZBrush. The next things I will give a try is sculpting on a mesh with subdivision levels and I also want to start exploring polypaint or whatever is the equivalent to that within Blender. There's a lot of you who already mentioned to me that Blender really suffers when working at really high resolution. So I'm looking forward to really do a comparison there. Take the exact same head within Blender and within ZBrush at the exact same resolution try to do the exact same work on top of both and see how that really compares. That's going to give us a very objective measure of how performance is within Blender as compared with ZBrush. You can follow my journey along as I learn the basics of Blender by subscribing to this channel. So far, I also have a bit of a concern with the amount of sculpting brushes that Blender has. It doesn't feel to me like there are as many brushes in here as there are in ZBrush. Now, of course, it has all the basics that you need to really do some basic sculpting. And when I'm saying basic here, I actually use those basic brushes almost all the time when it comes to sculpting. So truth be told, you can do a lot with only basic brushes. But there's no denying that ZBrush has a lot of very specialized sculpting brushes that are very useful under certain circumstances. And if Blender doesn't have an equivalent to those brushes, that will definitely reduce a little bit its value when creating complex characters. So I'll simply have to see through experimentation how Blender really holds up there and if the number of brushes that it has is sufficient to create some very high quality, complex, high poly characters. I did my final rendering within Marmoset Toolbag because I still don't know how to even place lights within Blender. I actually think that Blender brings a lot of value to 3D art because it is free software and it means that anyone can pick it up and learn how to do character art. So Blender has done absolutely great things for this industry. And I'm absolutely glad that there is a software like this that is freely available for everyone to use. I'm sure that anyone here who is watching this video and has experience with Blender can probably already point out to a few dumb mistakes that I'm doing. So if you do have any tips for me, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I read all the comments that people write. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you next time.